it's me Margaret and yes I am still in the throes of packing and probably will be uh, for quite some time yes I'm still crafting at night meaning yarn work pretty much only when I get really really tired but it occurred to me that I do have a great recommendation now whenever you have to do something tedious that you don't want to do whether that's cleaning or packing or something that you know is mindless I always try to look at it as an opportunity to listen to a good book or a podcast or um, in my case right this very minute I am binge watching Dark Shadows from 1966. <laughs> now here's the deal. I was teen nightsy. I remember coming home from school and sitting down in front of the TV with this little stool and eating Pop-Tarts and watching Dark Shadows in the afternoon. It was an old soap opera. It came on every day and I guess probably in my 30s when I had young children I was thinking why did my mother let me watch that show? <laughs> well now it's available to us we can all watch it right now if we want to and as I watch it and see how hokey it is Laura look at yourself right now perhaps I was a little carried away you know I could never hurt anyone that's a lie I get very frightened at the thought of losing David frightened enough to kill of course not I'm sure my mom just shook her head and thought, well, it's, it's, if she likes it, she'll get tired of it, and it's not a big deal. I understand. But this is on something called Tubi. And if you're not familiar with the movie network Tubi, I am going to introduce you to it. I love it, and it's free. Now, first of all, Tubi is not a sponsor. I just love it. Now you can watch this anywhere, your computer, your tablet, your phone, or any streaming device. I have Roku, watch it on my big TV. I like to think of Tubi as Netflix's cousin, <laughs> so to speak. It's free, see, watch now for free. It's ad supported and that's why you can watch it free. So that means that it's kind of like YouTube. You'll be watching something and then you'll have a, a, um, an ad break. The ads are short there you might at, at the most you'll have four commercials and they're like I don't know 10 seconds 15 seconds a piece and then you're back to your show so to me that's very tolerable a lot of times you'll just have one of those little short things if you click up here at the top you'll get the different genres and well you'll see what's popular and you have that down here the genres and they're all divided up um, but they have fun things on here too like where is it nostalgia TV and that's where I found dark shadows but of course you have plenty of other things that you can see um, and as far as books go I finished what Alice forgot which is a book I recommended to you earlier and it was terrific and Liz recommended Big Little Lies and The Husband's Secret also by Leanne Moriarty so I have those in my queue but this book, The Forgotten Seamstress, was also excellent. It weaves in two stories, one past, one present, and is total fiction about a seamstress who worked for the British royal family long ago. But then, because I listened to that book, Audible suggested that I read The Gown, which is a completely different story, but follows the same blueprint of someone who embroiders for the British royal family, supposedly for Queen Elizabeth's wedding gown specifically, and it too weaves together two stories, past and present. I'm reading it now, so I'll give you an update when I finish it. It's good so far. Um, I like to read about that period in history, before, during, and after World War II, so we'll see. Now, as I spin you around the room like I did in the last video, it looks probably like not much has changed, but let me tell you what, it has. <laughs> I have worked like crazy. Again, I am going to leave my um, sewing up as long as possible, just in case I want to get to it. Uh, look at the yarn closet. Editing Margaret here. Yarn from these white cubbies has been used as packing material. Oh, by the way, I found some old footage of w how that looked before I worked down all that Big Lots yarn, and I'm going to insert it for a comparison. I got this from Big Lots years ago. And it oh, wow. Seeing it like this gives me a good sense of accomplishment. None of this yarn in this section was packed. 
um, it was all worked up into charity donations from July 2019 until today, February 2020. I still have a tiny bit of that Big Lots yarn left, but if you want to see what I did with the majority of it, you'll have to look back at my last blog. And speaking of the Big Lots yarn, I'm still working on using it all up. I made another one of these, which is the uh, spiked mesh, oh, I never can say this, spiked mesh stitch, which is what this is right here with the plain top. Do have a tutorial on that. And this is just a basic knit beanie. And I was playing with the gradient effect. This is um, blue and pink held together. And you can see how it kind of twists as you use it so you get different amounts of blue and pink showing. It does kind of give you the, the gradient effect. Kind of, sort of. If you want to see more about that, look at the last video where I was playing with this idea. Oh yeah, I did this little baby hat too, and that just cracked me up. I should have done this in a different color and called it Saturn. <laughs> I also made a little crochet version of this knot top hat. Um, I'd like to do a tutorial if I can find the time to, to do that. I want to make this into one of those little birdie hats, and I thought this was cute and simple. Details to come. And this was done in Karen Simply Soft, which I was using with that Big Lots yarn. And it's just a basic beanie, camel stitch brim, and then I found those cute little heart buttons. So I put those on there, and I, I like that. I've also been playing that same game with what can you do with only limited colors. And pretty much did the same type of hats that I had done before, but I thought these came out great. And then... This is bulky yarn. It's that Bernat. Oh, what's it called? Here it is, Bernat Softy Chunky. Uh, this is the color natural. Yeah, but anyway, um, it is a number six bulky, and it's not. It's not as soft as I remembered it. But when you wash it, it softens beautifully. So that's a good one. Kind of a big sister, little sister, big brother, little brother, whatever. I think these look kind of gender neutral. So, um, but I love these. It just has such a good squishy feel. This is that basic beanie and a camel stitch the whole way. And then I just changed the colors here and there. And then, of course, a bead stitch beanie. This is the one that I did for that tutorial. And I do like it in the chunky, but I really prefer this in a um, lighter yarn. But it, it does work. This is the number six super bulky. Uh, it's thick. It's warm, that's for sure. So I'm continuing to work within my stash. And I'm having a good time doing it. Now, these cubbies right here, I also bought from Big Lots. As a matter of fact, y'all were with me when I put them together. And we bolted them to the wall. So Tucker wants me to go ahead and empty these out so that he can take them off the wall and then fix the, uh, the marks in the wall. So I'll be doing that sometime today. But just to give you a little perspective on how much actually has been done, let me take you out into this hallway and you can see all the boxes that I have packed up all the way through there. I've got to figure out how to twist these down into small circles. They're supposed to be portable. But I have completed this closet. I gave you a glimpse of that in another video. Only thing left are those shelves. So I have done a whole lot of work in my craft room, not to mention in the other rooms of the house. I know the lighting and the sound is weird in this video. I'm not using my lapel mic that I normally use because I'm moving around and there's things in my way and I don't have a wireless one. Mine has a wire that goes to the, uh, the camera itself. So forgive me if it doesn't sound like it usually does. I'm out here because I want you to see something that I use for organization, not just packing. And this is a box that I make into, say, an envelope. Instead of folding it all the way out in a square or rectangle, I just tape up the sides. It's laying flat, and I tape up three sides so that I have one big giant folder. And this is ideal for storing things like um, foam board or anything like large pattern pieces. If you print your patterns, for example, sewing patterns, 
and you cut out your pattern pieces and you don't want to fold them or roll them or anything like that. That's how I store mine, is like in this great big giant folder. So it comes in handy uh, for transporting, of course, like this, but also for storage because you can slide it behind a piece of furniture or under a table or bed or something like that. And it keeps everything clean and doesn't crease. This is a tip left over from my teaching days because we were responsible for doing our own bulletin boards in our room. So when I would create one that could be used again, <laughs> I would save all the pieces and parts and keep them in one of these great big folders. So um, that might come in handy for your craft room. I feel like my goal for doing Sheepishly Sharing, for doing videos, is to share something that may be of value to at least one person in each video. So that's why I'm always throwing in tips and saying, um, well, this is what I do. And in return, I often get some really good suggestions from you guys. So I have actually learned a lot more than I have ever shared, at least in my opinion. And uh, I think it's pretty valuable. And sometimes you guys are enablers. Sandy is a longtime friend, and in a recent comment, she mentioned using 12 inch circulars for her charity hats. I have a few sets of 9 inch circs, but no 12 inch, which are perfect for those knit baby scrap hats I love to do. So I broke down and bought the ones she suggested, and they are wonderful. So here they are. I got the 4 millimeter and the 5 millimeter because I use worsted weight the most for those, the scraps, I guess, for that. And you know what? I didn't find these difficult to work with at all. These 9 inch kind that I had really take a lot of, um, I guess it's a learning curve because you see how short that is. But these, these were pretty easy. I think it probably depends upon the way you hold your needles and your knitting style as to how much learning curve you have for a small set. But I love those. So thanks, Sandy. I'll link these below in case anyone's interested in uh, trying out these sets. So you may have noticed that I just presented you with a convoluted collection of clips which was filmed over the course of time between the last video and today. So I'm going to leave you now with something that happened on February 8th. So pretty. So in the meantime, thanks for hanging out with me and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.